Hi guys, I uh, just wanted to give you a quick update of what I've been working on. Uh, I've actually been use, uh, setting up the UI for the game. Uh, what you can see here is a, a quick test scene that I've made. Uh, there's a, a cube in the background there, so that's the, unit, uh, the, the 3D scene. And then over the top of that is a, um, <coughs> uh, a HTML like web browser layer. This is provided by uh, the Orsonium Unity library. Uh, and if you want to check that out, you can check that out at uh, this address here. And what that allows you to do is use the Orsonium framework, which is a, a .NET wrapper for um, the Chrome embedded browser, or um, sorry, the, the Chromium embedded framework, or CEF, uh, and that basically gives you all of the stuff you need to get it into a Unity game. Uh, as you can see, the, the the last commits were about a year ago. Um, there's a lot of these projects out there. A lot of them have been um, kind of uh, either abandoned or not been updated in a long time. Uh, Orsonium itself, the company, produces a Unity wrapper, uh, but that hasn't been updated for about two years. Uh, I think the, the version that it's supposed to work with is Unity 3 point something, so it doesn't work anymore. Uh, so what I've done is, I've, I actually tried a lot of different approaches, there's a, a million of these different wrappers out there, uh, I've tried using Chromium Embedded Framework, I've tried using the Mozilla Gecko uh, Embedded Web Browser, um, so I've, I've tried a lot of different approaches, a lot of different libraries, and this Orsonium Unity one is the the one that I found right now that works the best. So if we pop back to the game view, I'll give you a quick idea of what I've uh, I've got here. You can see we've got uh, just headers, paragraph tags, uh, hyperlinks. Uh, I've then got an Angular UI grid. Uh, now a lot of the work I do um, actually like at work when I'm not making well when I'm, when I'm not doing not a lot, which because obviously I can't say that I. Uh, that I spend all my time making games because to be honest I've been pretty slack on that recently. Uh, anyway, a lot of the work I do at, uh, for my full-time job is uh, using the Angular uh, framework which is a JavaScript uh, uh, model view controller um, setup. And so what you can see is the, the Angular UI grid is a component that you can get for that which basically takes data and puts it into a spreadsheet. You can sort things by headers. There's a lot of really cool controls you can do in this really cool customizations at the moment. This is just a basic example. Um, for the uh, the look and feel of it I'm using Bootstrap with some custom CSS on top. Uh, as you can see here this is just a Bootstrap rendered table so this is just a, a standard HTML table with the, the Bootstrap styling on top. Uh, next we've got a bootstrap panel which we'll use for movable windows, uh, dockable windows. Uh, again, paragraph text, all of the, the general bootstrap stuff that gives you the styling of your website. So I'm designing this like a website but through the uh, Orsonium Unity connector um, you can then pass uh, data backwards and forwards but to JavaScript and between JavaScript and the game and back. Uh, then, you know, sort of different ideas for what the different size panels will look like, uh, and then a more complex panel with like more varied layout. So all of the UI I'm going to go over doing this. The reason that I'm doing this is as nice as the, the new Unity UI um, tools are for, for Unity 5, they still lack a lot of stuff. Uh, particularly when it comes to doing tables of data, to doing um, sort of more complex layouts. And because the game's going to have a lot of tabular data, a lot of sort of more complex components on the UI, uh, I've really wanted to go over to using a HTML uh, based approach, a HTML and JavaScript based approach. Uh, so this is, yeah, this is where I'm at. Um, there's a few little problems that I'm currently working on um, that are possibly potential problems with the uh, Orsonium Unity library. Um, what we've, uh, the main problem I've come across is uh, the web security. It uses the default Chrome security, so you can't uh, do cross-domain transfers. 
um, and from sort of a more technical thing, if you if you know anything about Angular, it pulls the templates in from other files. So the template for anything uh, apart from this table will come from a a separate HTML file which will provide the template. And what will happen there is you in the Angular code say give me this template it goes off and it loads it because this is running in its own little sandbox it doesn't have access to anything outside that so what I'm uh, to, uh, it doesn't have access to anything outside the sandbox including looking up those templates and loading them in so what I need to do is actually modify the library a little bit and I'll probably post these back if it if it works out great I'll post this back to the uh, to the also new immunity um, uh, GitHub as a, as a pull request uh, to be able to modify the levels of security. Uh, Orsonium Core, um, which is a mainly a, a WinForms and a WPF uh, framework, does provide all of those options. So it is possible to do it. It's just not exposed in the wrapper for Unity. So I just need to add in that extra functionality. Uh, yeah, so it's just kind of just a quick, you know, look at the pretty tables update. Um, I need to uh, carry on with stuff. The the whole orbit navigation stuff. Uh, to be honest, it was doing my head in. I got frustrated and fed up and bored of it, and I was ignoring it basically. Um, so what I've been doing is setting up all of this stuff. Uh, I now have a laptop that I can use on the train. So I've been on the train in every morning, I've been doing little bits of this. Uh, I'll add in some recording stuff. Uh, yeah, sorry, there's uh, it's not like a huge update, but we've got tables, we've got interesting stuff, and uh, this is uh, going to make the the UI for the game um, really, really interesting and uh, really interactive as well. So, like you know, there's there's no reason why you can't click on these and it will take you to another window. Uh, you can add in uh, like sort of custom render graphics and animations, all of these things. So it's giving us all of the power that HTML JavaScript has, um, and then it's loaded into a, a window on the top. If I just stop the program, uh, what you can see here is a, a white plane, and if I just pop uh, over here, I'll show you the layout. Uh, we've got a camera, we've got this uh, prefab here, which is the web UI module, which is what I've called it. You can see I've got it in my prefab folder down here. That has uh, a plane with uh, a uh, it's got the mesh collider, it's got uh, the mesh renderer, and it's got this Ortonium uh, Orsonium Unity web texture, which is a a uh, controller provided by or sorry, a component provided by the Orsonium library. Uh, I've also then used a uh, just a, an unlit textured transparent shader to draw that on there. Uh, I do actually have a directional light on there, which now that it's unlit, I want to probably don't need. It's probably turning extra overhead. And then I've got a uh, a camera in that scene as well. So if I if I grab that, this uh, you can see a camera. It's set up. The culling mask is UI only, so it only shows this grid. Uh, when it boots up, it resizes the grid. Uh, if I grab that camera again. It will resize the, the the mesh to fit the size of the screen. It then loads up Chrome, uh, Google Chrome in the background, and instead of showing it in a window, it takes it as a texture and places it onto the texture here. Uh, and then the also uh, this Orsonium web texture also provides um, if you toggle interactive on. It then also does collision detection between the the, the mouse and the, the plane, and passes all of that back into the browser. So yeah, it's a really cool little bit of kit. Um, if if you're interested in doing more complicated AI's, uh, sorry, more complicated UIs for your games, I would recommend it. It's uh, a little bit uh, buggy in that there's a few features, as I said, with the the web security and the the cross domain loading um, is not implemented. Um, I'm going to try my best to implement that over the next couple of days, um, and uh, and if I get a good result for that, I'll post it back to the uh, as a pull request to the uh, to the, the 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 GitHub as it is. 
Um, if the project is dead, I, d I do have an issue open at the moment. If I don't get any response from that, what I'll do is I'll create a new GitHub, um, uh, a new GitHub uh, repository with my modifications to it, so at least people can download it and use it and play with it and contribute back. And obviously, I'll reference back to the existing one there. So yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, not hugely action-packed this time. Um, I'm gonna continue trying to get more videos out. Uh, the project's not dead, it's just going incredibly slow. <laughs> which is uh, which is frustrating for me, as I imagine it's frustrating for everybody else. Uh, but it, it is what it is. Uh, I, you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, like, you know, sort of, people to think that I've given up on this or that I'm, I'm not interested in it anymore it's definitely something that I'm actively working on whenever I get time to do so um, again I would love your comments I uh, love everybody's feedback um, if you've got any ideas for the game if you can uh, if you have a particularly for the UI if you have any interesting ideas for the UI I'd love to hear about it uh, hopefully the next video I'll have a, a more fleshed out UI with all the menus, examples of the different panels for like managing the ships and managing colonies, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so until I see you next time, thank you very much for watching and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Awesome guys, rock on, bye.